going back to what we talked about before, we have one twenty-fourth of a second to do what? One twenty-fourth of a second to really make a great first impression with them, right? And I got to really establish three main things in the first four seconds. What is it? Hey, this is Blake Sloan. I've been selling real estate over 14 years. Our team of highly trained professionals, along with our unmatched marketing, has sold thousands of homes here in the Myrtle Beach area, and this is how we do it. Sharp as attack. Enthusiastic as hell. Enthusiastic as hell. And an authority, was a powerful authority figure? A authority figure. A figure of authority. Figure of authority. It's very important to do. So we talk about this. Sharp's attacks are going to come in the way I look, the way I dress. So I meet with clients, I cannot be dressed down. I've got to be dressed up. I've got to be making sure I'm on point, especially if I'm younger. If I'm younger, guess what? I've got to be extra sharp. Why? Because I have to really make up for the disadvantage I'm at, period. Okay, second piece here is enthusiastic as hell. This is my state. Now, what happens if I'm not naturally enthusiastic? I've got to create it. I've got to be able to create that from the inside out. And I do that by doing what? Changing my state. What does that mean? Changing my state. Yeah, in a way. Right. I've got to change my state. Tony Robbins is probably the master of this. If you guys want to know more about your state, you want to study some Tony Robbins. Uh, I've, been to, I've been a part of his um, coaching group before. I've been to almost every event he's ever had. Um, except the one that was I paid for as it didn't ever actually go was in Fiji. Um, I can't remember. There's something about health and wellness, but um, he's a master of what of state. And so sometimes you got to physically move to get your state right, so that you, you can be focused to bring that emotion in. Boulder may talk about what motion creates emotion, meaning that if I got to move around and get my my state going, that's how I create more emotion. That's why it's important to stand up when you're making phone calls. All these things make a big difference here that are super important, right? And so that's a very important piece here because what happens is people are running an unconscious dialogue against you while you're pitching. What does that mean, you think? An unconscious dialogue. They're forming their opinion of you while you're talking. And the dialogue is subconscious and it's going one or two ways. This guy or this girl is going to help me. This guy or this girl is going to hurt me. And it's going to affect their decision because no one wants to make a bad decision because it reduces their status. And so I understand, look, I'm up against this and, uh, you know, you're, you're just facing it overall. Just, this is how people are. Why? Because humans grow up really creating and living through patterns. Just how humans are. It's part of a survival technique that we have as human beings that, hey, look, someone's going to harm me. I'm going to be more what? more cautious of it. And so I understand that and I got to play the game to make sure that I come across the right way. The way they dress, the way they dress was they say like three times. Yeah. They weren't professionally dressed. We went in with the suit and tie on, guess what? Professionally dressed, trustworthy and important to that. And they thought automatically that person was a slick salesman. But really, guess what started that? The way they were dressed. Mm -hmm. And so the snowballs created based on the narrative they created in their head from the very first four seconds. And so at that point, that person, those multiple people couldn't get out from under. And some of those are worse slimy sales people. It's important for me to understand overall that. So my job here is to control that fear and that dialogue from the very beginning. And I do that through multiple things, one of which is going to be in the telephone and face to face. What do you think it's going to be? What to start with? Tonality. What does that mean there? Tonality is the way you say something, both with the speed, I'm sorry, the, the, the volume, the cadence, the speed, the way you talk about it. But overall, it talks about a lot of this is tonality is a linchpin. What does that mean, you think? Tonality is a linchpin. Right? It has to do with tonality and how people really operate and the ability to do it. And most of that comes on uncertainty. And Jordan Belfort talks about this in his course. He talks about selling meat. Anybody remember this? Well, I don't need to go back to that course. Um, and it may be in this, the bonus course, but it talks about selling meat. Yeah, he sold steaks, I'm pretty sure. But he did mortgage too, but I think it's the steaks we talked about. It was a meat sales job. He talked about the difference in the, the certainty. The whole place talked about how bad it was, how terrible it was. And so Jordan Belfort went down the same exact side of the street and sold meats. And guess what happened? 
He sold me $35,000 in meat sales from the same exact clients by doing what? Having the right tonality and energy. And so part of tonality is what? Transfer of emotion is super important. And so it has to be done with two things. The trust is built with tonality and body language. And it says without the right tonality, most people can't get their pitch off. And the other thing most people don't realize, they sound flat about what they're selling. I hear it a lot in the telephones because what's happening is you're making 100 dials on dial 25. What happens to your tonality? It goes flat, which means, guess what? Delivery is not as powerful as it could be to the client, which means they're not really as accepting to you. Now, why does that matter the most right now? They're already uncertain anyway, and here's the problem. Most people, most people are having a bad day anyways. You're calling them, and guess what? They're getting hit by robocallers consistently. Robocallers have changed the game for everybody because you're getting I get hit with 15 a day. And so as many people hate their phone ringing, so when they do answer, they get you. Your tonality better be on port, or you're going to get smashed. Because unbeknownst to you, they had 10 robocallers in the past 24 hours that also called them, and you've got to be a lot different to be able to get them out of that pit they're in and back up to where they need to be at the promise line. And so I want you to record and be aware of what's happening with your tonality, and you can do it. You need a couple things. Call the CEFC. Anybody remember what that is? CEFC. Anybody remember what that is? Looking to do this face-to-face -face and also on the telephone. What's the mo by far the most important? C, what do you think of C is? Give me a couple. Charisma? No. Connection. What is it? Connection. Connection. Connection is the most important piece here to them. What does that mean, you think? They feel me. They feel a connection to me, to my tonality, to the way I talk, to who I am. That's what I talk about when I call people out of town, especially older people. I was their grandson in Myrtle Beach is the way I visualize it. I would connect with them and say, hey, Tony's Blade from Myrtle Beach, how you doing? They don't remember who I am, but guess what my tonality says? You should know who I am, and you're supposed to know who I am. And so that automatically wakes them up, brings them to me from an attraction standpoint, and now I'm able to get through and pass that initial roadblock, so to speak, from the very beginning. E stands for, what do you think it stands for? Energy. Energy. Yep, I think he has your extra energy. Meaning what? What does extra energy mean? You need a level above them. You need extra more than you think you need. I need more energy than I think I need. So the energy you're bringing in most cases, guess what? It's not enough. It's still flat. Why is that? Because you don't realize they had a shitty day before you called or before you went to the appointment or before they came in here. They've been fighting with their wife or their husband or whatever it is beforehand, and they need your extra energy to do what? Raise them up to a state that now can allow them to be converted. Because if they're in a low state and I'm not in a high state and I can't convert them in a low state, period. Why? Because people won't take action in a low state. So you got to ask yourself this question, does my energy raise the state of the people I'm meeting with face to face? Very important piece there. F, what's F mean? What's F mean? I need something. No, come on. No. Nope. Talking about sales here. I'm talking about tonality. What am I talking about? No, I'm talking about tonality. I'm talking about tonality. Fluctuation. I've got to make sure I'm fluctuating, right? I've got to make sure that I'm speeding up, I'm slowing down. Why is that? Because I'm pulling in them subconsciously to what I'm doing. So part of it is very important. I do this in my presentations. I talk really fast, and guess what I do? Yeah, I talk really slow. They have to have that part that's that cadence and that ups and downs that I'm having here. It needs to be like this. If I'm flatlining my follow-up, they're not going to follow me. Or if I'm flatlining my presentation, they're not going to follow me. I have to make sure I have fluctuation in terms of what I do. And the fourth thing I do is I sprinkle in the last C. What is it? What is it? Close. Got to make sure I have the close. Which in this case would be what? Trial closes like what? Do you like the idea? Does the idea make sense to you? Do you see how it's going to benefit you? What do you like best about it? Those are closes, and I need to do that to break up the subconscious pattern to do what? Pattern interrupt them, so they got to do what now? They got to think, and they got to speak. 
So if you're not asking enough questions and you're bulldozing them, you're not really interrupting their subconscious mind enough to make them think about it. And when they think about it and they speak about it, it makes them, what, anchor it in their mind. And so CEFC stands for what again? Connection, Connection. extra energy, fluctuation, and close. Right? This here is a skill that you must master overall. Very, very important piece here in terms of what I need to do. I've got to make sure I'm mastering those overall what it is. Right? Most people understand how toxic it is when you call someone using the wrong tonality. What do you think it means by that? If your, if your tonality's flat, they're having a bad day already, guess what they think? F this guy, F this girl, that they're wasting my time. Right? You must make sure you become a tonality expert and sound different than anyone else. And you talked about this. Most people aren't happy. They aren't looking for your call. And the robocalls have made them hostile. And so my way to combat that and break through that is to have extra tonality, extra energy, connection to my voice, fluctuation, and make sure I'm asking for the close. The tonality allows you to transfer energy over the phone. It has to be flowing out of you. The key here is to what? Nail the first two sentences and then do what? Nail the next two sentences. I'm focusing the micro really sentences here because I want to make sure I'm very purposeful or aware of my tonality in the front end when I'm doing that. Now to do that, the only thing I forgot here in the notes too is there's a big difference between 98% awesome and 100% awesome. What does that mean you think? Big difference between 98% awesome and 100% awesome. That 2% will cost you the appointment. And so the key here in the linchpin of this here is managing my state. If I want to be successful, I've got to be good at mastering my state. You must find a way to put yourself into an empowered state. Physically, a lot of people do breath work. They'll do push-ups, squats, whatever it is to get themselves into some state that's different to make sure that you're able to change yourself so that you can give that energy away. The problem is most salespeople are walking around in a disempowered state. It says here, notice, you want to be that pop, that energy that comes in and enthusiasm, enthuses them so they can feel it. And there's a wraparound of the tonality of self-belief. Very important piece here. Right? Other secret things, the side things I want to watch for dismissive, Body language, dismissive body language. What does that mean? Cross arms. What else? Both. Eye contact, cross arms, cross legs, sitting back. If you got somebody at your table and they're sitting back four feet, guess what that shows? Their standoff is there, going to be more difficult to crack. I'm already analyzing their personality type, and guess what I'm doing to that person? I'm going after their ass. Right? In a nice way. I'm leaning in, so that's a great way to put it. I want to make sure I'm going after them energetically. Right? It's very important. Other thing, too. I want to master my 10 different tonalities. I want to make sure I'm doing different things. I'll give you the first two really important. We talked about this last week. Number one, I've got to share logical certainty. What does that mean? Logical certainty. Best way to look at that is it makes sense, doesn't it? And to make it make sense, what? Logically. Second piece. Talk about this. Remember what it was? There's a big, some of you guys shared it as your, 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 your share from the day. Emotional certainty. Their gut feeling about you. What's their gut feeling say about you? Am I going after that piece there? That's where you're going to come up with a connection. The extra energy, the fluctuation, the clothes is their gut feeling about you is what matters the most. That's why a lot of you guys are nailing the presentation from a word standpoint, but the problem is you're not getting them on the emotional certainty part. You still have uncertainty in the way you present it. You don't know the words. You're not as comfortable yet. So it's very important for me to understand I'm going through that piece here. I'll give you five things this year and we'll finish this part. The five most pieces of the empowered state. Anybody remember what they are? Number one is certainty. We all know about that. We're transferring that. Second piece is clarity. Third piece is conviction. And there's two more on that that are kind of behind that, but they're confidence and courage. Confidence and courage.
Now, I want you to look at these, these five most powerful, empowered states, and rate yourself in your presentations of how am I coming across in these five. Because part of what I'm doing here is transferring these to my potential client to want to work with me. And it's a checklist for you to go back through and say, all right, when I'm meeting face-to-face, how am I showing up in terms of certainty? How am I showing up in terms of clarity? My conviction for my product and who I am and what I do, and that I'm the best fit for them, and also my confidence and courage, how does that show up in terms of my presentation? Because you can say the best words, but miss a few of these, and guess what's going to happen? They're not going to sound with you. Makes sense logically, but guess what? In deep inside, it doesn't feel like it's right. And that's why some of y'all get to the end and you're so puzzled of why they didn't sign. They walked out. You thought they were going to sign with you, give this objection. They tell you, you got to think about it. And whatever it is, the back end is you miss one of these five things here. Because if you nail these, overall, they're going to be able to move forward. Now, the opposite of this, one of the big ones you see that are really the, the disempowered state is confusion. Confusion. How can I show up in our presentation? Not being clear or all over the place. All over the place, not sure what you're going to say next. Uncertainty, overwhelm, and boredom. Those are the, mo- the most unempowered state, right? So confusion, uncertainty, overwhelm, and boredom. And so boredom can show up in me making my phone calls and just in the call of 50, 100, whatever it is, I'm breaking down an empowered, a disempowered state. I'm not going to be able to transfer emotion to my clients. And so my job is to do what? Be aware of it, put myself in check, and then find a way to raise my state. You got to get down and do some push-ups, do some air squats, right? Do some breath work, whatever it is. That's how you're able to get back into that state. I used to always make my calls with music in the background, right? Make the dial to hit pause. Get off the phone, make the music going back again. Whatever it is, keep me going in that, in that empowered state. Okay, so you're able to make sure you're able to stay on top of that which matters the most.